today fun packing guys i already said to him that the lord is my helper because how do you interview someone who has had a 27 year career as against your 10 year career but yes the lord is my shepherd i shall not want amen Amen. Black Pastor, amen. amen, amen <laughs> he was praying amen, as well. Amen. He had his eyes closed. <laughs> but yes, amen. Thanks for coming. I really yeah, appreciate so it. Such an honor to be having a conversation with you this morning. Um, let's just touch a bit on Boo, right? Um, the last time you released an album was about four years ago in yeah, 2020. Right, 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 yes, correct. but let's talk yeah. about um, the song my Boo and yeah. its creation. Who is the Boo you're talking about? Well, my Boo is any wonderful friend, you know. Eight. Especially, I mean, from the other genre, you know. Okay. Yeah, the other gender. Okay. So, I mean, it's a love song. It's talking about the beautiful woman in mm -hmm. my life and all that. It doesn't have to be personal, but... Uh, right. I mean, yeah. So it's, it's not it's, for any particular... No, no, no. It's okay. just for people who love each other. Okay. Right. People who love each other. Yes. All right. right. Now, what is your, your Rastafarian creed? Um, I understand that Rastafarians have, you know, certain rules or um, guidelines that they go by, but sometimes some people personalize it. What would it be for you? Well, it will take me a whole decade to tell you about Rasta and what the creed is all uh -huh. about. But I will summarize That's why I say you should personalize it. Yes, yeah. it's all about love. Mm -hmm. Rasta is all about love and Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. You see, once you have love and then you know that you have to do right and run away from wrong, right. that is Rasta. Rasta basically is Pan-Africanism. It's a black movement. Mm -hmm. That is what it is. Because Marcus Garvey is seen as the prophet of Rasta. Right. Rasta doesn't believe in death. We believe in life. For that mm -hmm. matter, you would hardly see Rasta people attend funerals. Oh. You see, hardly. Would you now see that you mentioned, Rasta I'll, people? Yeah. I would observe that. In fact, and uh, Rasta people do not look at dead bodies. See? Okay. Yeah, we don't look at dead bodies. I mean, if anybody suddenly dies in front of you, you just have to turn your face away. But if you have looked at the dead body, you are forced to shave off. In other words, oh. go Sakura. Yeah. But you, you will still be yourself. a Rastafarian? Oh, yes, yes, you will. Okay. But you would have to go through the rituals by shaving off your locks and taking okay. off the beard and then starting again. It's All like re-baptism. So what you happens know? to the Rastafarians who don't actually have Rasta? Because you know some people are Rastafarians in their hearts, yeah, right? Yeah. They don't have the whole yeah. Rasta thing. So what if that person sees a dead body? What happens to them then? Well, I mean, for Rasta, you must have your locks. If you don't oh. have the locks on your head because of some uh, medical reasons, fine. But personal reasons as in, oh, because of my job, oh, because of my this, we always encourage Rasta people to have their locks because I, it's a vow. I know two Rastafarians who don't have. And they, they are in this house. Probably. Hello, Cyril. Hello, Steve. Probably <laughs> they have medical reasons, but that is what it is. Uh -huh. Every Rasta must have their locks on. Okay. There was a controversial song in the days by Morgan Heritage mm -hmm. that said, Don't have a dread. You don't have a dread to be Rasta. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not a dreadlocks thing. It's what I'm referring it's to. It's divine right? conception of the heart. Uh -huh. But they have had loads of criticism, even from the Rasta fraternity right. and beyond. You cannot say that you are Rasta and the Rasta is in your heart. It must show on, on your, your head. head. Because that's where the name is coming from. Exactly. Rasta, right. Well, it's actually coming from Haile Selassie. Okay. Haile Selassie. Okay. I mean, he was called Ras so, wait, so, wait, so it's not even about the hair? No, no, no. No, no. Oh. no, no. The hair is not called Rasta. But it's just lost. Well, you know when we do, when we braid, mm. we call it Rasta. That, that's it. That's the misconception. Oh. But Rasta is bigger than just the hair. The hair is important, but the it's hair alone is not Rasta. We have a lot of people who have dreadlocks and they are not Rasta. Yeah, they have dreadlocks on their hair because of uh -huh. maybe some kind of a career. Yeah. They are footballers, they are boxers. Mm -hmm. They want a certain kind of attention. So they use that to capture that. It's not wrong, but they are not Rastas. But we call everybody who has dreadlocks this is some education. Yeah, it's, it's, Thank it's, you. It's, it's misconceptions. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay, I have been educated. Information is good, isn't it? All right, now talking about information, yeah. you, you recently, um, you are yet to release your album, right? right, right, right. Um, yeah. Salaga Soldier. That's right. Let's talk about Salaga mm -hmm. Soldier. Um, are you from Salaga 
I know you are not, but do you have any, um, if, I, if I'm asking are you from Salaga, do you have any connections, yeah? Do you have any connections to um, Salaga and then any special reason? Yes, I do. Uh, because, I mean, Salaga is part of Ghana and it's part of Africa. Mm. I am an African, you see, Pan-African. So, I mean, anything about Africa, yes, I have that connection to that thing. Okay. But I wasn't born in Salaga, and I would not say that uh, Salaga is a place that I truly come from, as in terms of birth or right. origin. Right. But it's part of my life, see? Mm -hmm. It's part of my life. And the reason the album is called Salaga Soldier is because of slavery. You remember in the days of I mean, slavery, Salaga used to have a, a slave market. market. Yes, yeah. a slave market. When you go there... Now you will still see signs of slavery in that beautiful city. I prefer to call it a city. Mm -hmm. So there was a soldier there, or better still, there were soldiers that later got known in history okay. as the Salaga soldier okay. or the Salaga soldiers. Mm -hmm. They were fighting against slavery and they had the power to repel bullets. You oh. fire at them, the bullet will hit ricochet and come back to you. Okay. Seeing that was what was happening in the day. So I decided to call this um, album Salaga Soldier just to give some reverence to the people who fought against slavery in the days and also the power of Africa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now the album is going to be a 20 track album. For real. And that's a lot. Now, yeah. we are in the time where people don't believe in creating albums because it's a lot of work, they For say. Real. A lot of work goes into promoting all of the songs. You can release 20 um, songs on the album, but just one or two are going to do well. You know, people don't even have the patience to want to consume all of the songs on the album anymore. What was the need for you to put 20 songs on this album? Too much is given, much is required, you okay. know? Yes, I mean, I was blessed to be able to go into the studio and make a number of songs. Mm. I don't come from the era of singles. Mm. Yes, for right. me, I mean, yes, times are changing and all that, but I still have a strong connection to my roots. Mm -hmm. I am not somebody who is from the era of singles. I see that as lazy work, you see. Gee. That's a personal thing. I mean, okay. go into the studio, make one song, and come out of the studio and push it force it on people. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you have money, you can push anything. See? Mm -hmm. Be it a single or an album. Now they even have something they call the EPs. Yes. I don't come from the EP era. I don't come from the singles era. I come from the era of albums. Okay. I am fed up and tired listening to just one song. Right. I want to be able to get into the spirit of the right. album, the mood. How did you record it from one song to the other? How are the drums sounding? Mm -hmm. What was the kick like here? Mm -hmm. Oh, the guitar. What was the mood of the guitarist from this song all the way down? The I want you to take me through a journey. Okay. But now it's all about singles, singles, singles. That is why we have miming, miming, miming mm -hmm. all over the place. Hey. You have one song and it's boom. That you come out to break this and... table. But, yeah. but, but, I mean, with that said, don't you also think that things and times are changing? And so it's also good to sometimes, right? I understand that, okay, it's okay to be set in your ways. But don't you think sometimes you just have to bend, you know, yourself a bit just to also flow into how things are going. I'll use TikTok as a typical example, right? Artists weren't used to that. But now that TikTok has also become a tool for music promotion, you find that some artists that hitherto were not, um, you know, on the platform or didn't even use the platform, didn't know about the platform, are now also big on the platform, right? So don't you think that it's okay to sometimes just, you know, bend yourself to flow through and then go with the times as well so that your music or your personality or the brand is more acceptable? There's no hard and fast rule about anything. You can okay. always bend. But when you bend too much, you break. Seeing? Mm. Yes, I mean, there's TikTok. I mean, we have people who are releasing singles. No disrespect to them. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that if you have money, you can push anything at all. Okay. Seeing? So people go into the studio, they record singles, but the quality of the music is still draining. Right. In the days of the albums, you would see a man go into the studio, stay in the studio for so long, and when he comes out, quality follows him. Mm. Now, 
is so digital. Pop, 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 pop. Within a few seconds, the thing is done. Some people yes. call it fast food music. Fast food music, of course. It mm. is fragile music. It doesn't go anywhere. That's what is making so many people cry in Ghana right now. Mm. Oh, our music is not going anywhere. I mean, I think we need to go back to the album era. Right. Even in the days of the album, we released singles. We had the first single. We had a second single. Some would even release the third single before the main album. And put all would on the drop. album. Yes. Which you've done as well. Yes. You've done that with your Sodom and Gomorrah, exactly. right? Exactly. So we'll come to Sodom and Gomorrah um, soon. But we'll play Sodom and Gomorrah right after the interview ends, right? If you are watching on Team Music TV, you see that we also have the artwork for the album Salaga Soldier. We are going to run through, you know, the list of songs really for soon. real. But you have three features on, on there. I see Kina Yesuba is on there yeah, as well. Yeah, for real. And then two others. So let's yeah. run through the decision to choose these people on the songs because um, for the work you've put in, again, 20 songs is not easy, right? For the work you've put in, one will think that, oh, you want to be selfish with the album and just be, <laughs> yeah, have just you on it, right? But you, you feature three ah. other people, so why that decision? Well, I'm going to go into something that might be a little uncomfortable, but let me still do it. Okay. Now, one, I am not the kind of artist who truly likes features. Because I believe that music is very personal. Mm -hmm. When I make my music, I go through some kind of inspiration. You may not have the same inspiration. Okay. So when I put you into it, you are either forced and beaten into line. Or, beaten into line. <laughs> yes, or you may have to also look at some other thing, like the commercial reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm putting this guy on it because I want the album to go further. Right. See? But most of the time when I make my music, it's so personal and so spiritual to me that I do not want to put anybody on it unless at the writing of the song, mm -hmm. I told myself, okay, this thing that I'm going to write, this is the kind of voice I would like on it. Remember, I didn't say personality. This the is voice. the kind of voice mm -hmm. I would want on it. But who has this kind of voice? Okay. I look at the voice first before. I put the personality to the voice. Okay. So I don't look at commercial reasons. I will be a hypocrite if I tell you that there weren't songs that I made and I was thinking commercial. There were songs I made that I said, okay, the way this song is, it's a trendy song. It won't last beyond one year or two years. Mm -hmm. So I need somebody who will be able to, push I mean, it. push it up. Trust me, I've spoken to a number of musicians mm -hmm. who were dragging their feet, you know, they dragged their feet and I realized that, nah, I'm not the kind of person who will keep chasing people because I want a certain commercial value to right. my music. I speak to you once, oh yeah, I'll do it, yeah, boss man, yeah, senior <laughs> man, I will do them, yeah. You know, then at the end of the day, you realize that you have to chase the person, no, I'll not chase you. So I can right. tell you that I approached some musicians mm -hmm. right here and they were dragging their feet. Oh, so and that's I just to say to that if on. you had your way, you would yeah. have had more than three features on the album. Not on this album, probably, but okay. on some singles that are released. But on this album, I intentionally decided to go rough and wild. Okay. Yeah. Rough and wild. Rough and wild. That will lead me to asking what a studio time for you is like. Ah. So this album was recorded over a period of four years. I mean, COVID came. Oh. Yes. And whilst people okay. were busily wearing their face masks and all that, we were in the studio creating this. Remember, this is a live album. We had people okay. playing the drums, people playing the guitars and all that. Mm -hmm. So it was a whole family in the studio. And I spent so much time in the studio. I mean, if you know my schedules, I am on radio, daytime, in the evening, I am online, then I go into the studio again. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of work. But when I'm in the studio, it's like I'm in heaven. Mm -hmm. So I love to create. And this album is unique in the sense that all the albums that I released in the past, I wrote every single note of music before going into the studio. What? I wrote... Wait, you write the lyrics? Yeah, yeah. Then you write the music notes? Of course. Yo. Of course. I mean, when you write the music, you put melody <laughs> to the tail, lyrics and everything. Wow. And then you create the bass line in your head. Okay, so this is what I want to... Every single note before you get into the studio. Then you bring the producer in, and then you would now review mm -hmm. what you had in mind. You know, so before you go into the studio, it looks like the music is already cooked. But this one was different. I met a younger producer mm -hmm. and then we decided that, okay, so this is the kind of uh, beat I want, a direction I want for this song. We'll get into the song. Maybe I'll just have the chorus and a hook. And then, okay, so we are working on it. And then inspiration starts coming in. So a lot of the songs here 
were created right through the inspiration of the Most High Jah. Wow. Right in the studio. I am overwhelmed. Wow. Now, you've mentioned a few things that have stuck out to me. Being in the studio is like heaven to you. Yeah. Music is spiritual to you. For real. Creation of the album was mm. straight um, by inspiration yeah, from Jah. For real. Right? Yeah. What would you say your relationship with, um, with God or with a higher spiritual authority is? And then also, what does spirituality mean to you? Well, spirituality means everything to me. Black Rasta is a very spiritual person. I'm not religious one bit. Mm. I am I believe very in that spiritual. as well. Spirituality yeah. over religion. For real. So I am so connected to God. I believe that when you dwell in the shadow of the Almighty, you continue to be there. Mm. It doesn't matter what you encounter. You would always be able to batter down all that. So, yes, I mean, I follow God wherever I go. It's all about God. Mm. When I'm walking, it's about God. When I'm sleeping, it's about God. Mm -hmm. You see? So you can't detach God from Black Rasta. Right. That higher authority is the guide for my life. Mm -hmm. And I love God so much so that if you take God out of my life, it's not going to be possible. It's not going to it be possible. Work. My life will be meaningless. Right. But one thing that has been made possible, you know, is this album. Yeah. And also, wait, for Salaga Soldier, yeah. for all of the 20 tracks, would yeah. you say that you have some favorites? I know, I know, right? You put out the song. Yeah. But definitely some songs will, you know, draw you in more than others. Mm. If there are... Which are these? Okay. So the secret behind Salaga Soldier is that we recorded 60 songs. Huh? Period of four years. Okay. 60, 60 songs. hot songs. Okay. So on the 2nd of September 2024, Black Rasta will be 50 years young. Oh. I'm going to release Happy another birthday, album. Man. Thank you. And this album is going to be 100% African music. Okay. Same, like my boo that you, 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 you mm -hmm. listen to. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to be. So Salaga Soldier is 100% reggae and kuchoko. Okay. Reggae and kuchoko. That is what it is. And so out of the 60, we chose some Wait, of those that we felt, okay, so this one is going to resonate with the people more. Mm -hmm. This one carries the right message at this time. Mm -hmm. So the 20 tracks, in fact, we originally had 19 then all of a sudden, just last two weeks, we had a big collaboration coming in. I mean, from Anthony B, the 15th track there. Okay. It's called The Barber Shop. Mm -hmm. Anthony B had been sent the music. He was supposed to listen to the thing. He was busy. I mean, he's a big Jamaican artist. Right. He was touring. Then he made time to listen to the thing, and the very first minute he listened to it, he was captured. That's nice. He said, no, man, I must be on this. In fact, we had ruled this song out. Mm -hmm. But when he came on it, the team decided that we had to put had it to out. Add it. So that's how come we have 20 tracks on the album. And I love every single tune on the album or else it would never have been on the album. Right. I don't make an album and say these are album songs. Now, in the days, we had what mm -hmm. was known as album songs. It means they were songs to just put together. make up the album. Right. But they had the hit songs or the main songs of the album. Mm -hmm. Two songs probably... They push the two songs. But when I release an album, I release children onto the universe and they have the special powers and energies. None of them is a weakling. Okay. None of them will fall by the roadside. Okay. They are all powerful and energetic. And that's to say that yeah. they are all going to grow For and real. flourish, right? For real. Now, um, what, what I also want to ask about, you know, the album and the creation of it is, are we going to, you mentioned that you did 60, right? Yeah. Come your birthday in September, are we going to get another set of 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get okay. 20. Remember okay. the last album I released, Timbuktu by Road, mm -hmm. four years ago, had 36 tracks. That's a lot. Yes, yes. That's what people say. And when I hear people say, oh, but that is too much and people would not consume that. Hey, go to the chop bar and see how much people make time to eat food, no mm -hmm. matter how much it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be as huge as the whole table. <laughs> they will take time and eat it gradually. As I said, to who much is given, much, much is, is desired and expected. So to you, you don't expect that we consume all in a day. So no, you sir. can just listen to it over time. Over time, right. listen to it because it's one hit after the other. The right. first track to be recorded was Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's a very personal tune to me. Mm. I traveled all the way to Israel, went into Syria, and then went to the area today known as Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. And I saw some of the things that the Bible talked about and even the Quran. Mm -hmm. 
And I told myself that, oh God, give me the right inspiration. Right. To so make that's a where that is coming Sodom from. Sodom and Gomorrah is All right. coming from. Now, talking about traveling, yeah. I want us to look at the evolution of your music, right? right? Um, from where you sit, I mean, sometimes you have to be able to detach yourself from your bodies of work so that you are able to criticize, For right? Real. Yes. With the evolution of your music and with how far your music ha has traveled, how would you um, put that? I mean, if you have to talk about that, what would you say? Well, I would say that I have evolved. Yeah, the evolution has been a little slow, mm -hmm. but glory to the most high. The elephant, I mean, it's a big animal, so it takes time to go through gestation and mm -hmm. all that and all that. So I would say that, yes, it's been quite slow, but it's been splendid. Mm -hmm. From the days I was singing off-key, mm. you put on the music and, hey, the brother is off-key. Mm -hmm. You know, from the days when we could not even sing on time, mm -hmm. from the days when we did not understand melody, right. from the days when we were just like headless jacks on stage, mm -hmm. to the days where you understand melody, create music and people sit back and say, wow, how did you make this? To the days that you can understand exactly what audience you are performing to. Mm -hmm. And what audiences you are performing for. Right. You travel around the world. And for me, I am most excited when people do not know me. Mm. Because it gives me the opportunity to explore. And to introduce yourself. Yes, to introduce to myself and right. make them enjoy whatever I have. Right. It's easy. I mean, when, when people know you and then you, I mean, start singing and they sing along and everything goes smooth. But when you don't know the craft for me, I was in the Ivory Coast a few weeks mm -hmm. back, mm -hmm. and these are people who speak French. So that means that you have to put in extra work. Extra make, work, right. performance, energy, action. That's what it is. It's that like in writing. Uh -huh. When you are writing prose, when you are writing fiction, mm -hmm. they tell you that do not tell, show. Don't tell me that a queer is a very rich woman. <laughs> people love her in the area. No, show that. How do you show that? Oh, a queer was a woman who had 20 trucks of... Uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. She had this number of houses right. and she had a gold mine. Straight away, people are going to say, oh, this is a rich person. Everywhere she went, people greeted her. People even brought her gifts. That tells you that people loved her. Right. Seen? So Seen that. in my music and also on stage, I show. I don't show tell. working. Exactly. So it's not, it's not only about the talk talk. Show working. Action day. Action <laughs> for day. But I'm curious, Black Rasta, you always have a bag you know, slang around oh, your yeah, yeah, neck. Yeah, yeah. For real. What would you say, would you want to tell me what the content of the bag well, is? Well, this thing contains, uh, I mean, a lot of things. Uh -huh. Sometimes I put my USB uh, okay. drives right in there. Okay. Other times I keep some herbs in there as okay. well. Okay. See? Uh -huh. Other times, this bag also contains some lyrics. I write lyrics and oh. I just, bam, put th that thing inside. Okay, so, so should yeah. someone snatch this bag? There will be things. Oh, yeah, there'll yeah, be there'll things. be things. Since the day inside. But he can't sleep <laughs> overnight. He will have to return. Return it. Yeah. Be before I let you go, Black Rasta, what are your thoughts on Ghana's first, Ghana's music industry, and then the entertainment industry? I think that we need to have a DNA for the Ghana music industry and for mm. our music. We don't have a DNA right now. Right now, we are hooking on to almost anything that is trendy. Right. And I think that is so dangerous. If you don't stand for anything... When you say that, how do you mean? You will fall for everything. We don't have a DNA. In other words, we don't have what we say, this is our music. Mm. What is it? High life has been relegated to the old folk. A young man of about 16, 17 doing high life, they will take you to a psychiatric hospital and check your head. See, when High Life is playing here, all the youth are running away from it. And it's the same problem Jamaica is suffering from. Just yesterday, Scatter Barrel, who is a big producer of music mm -hmm. in Jamaica, said reggae music is dead. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the radios are not playing that anymore mm -hmm. in Jamaica. But outside Jamaica, people are still it's enjoying really reggae music. And he said, until we are able to build back the DNA of Jamaica, Things are not going to work in Jamaica. So bringing it back to Ghana is yes. until we are able to build back the, the DNA high life. of Ghana music, yes. that is high life, we will not be able and to... And remember, high life is a broad broad genre. Mm -hmm. It has Palogo in it. It has 
what is it, Jama in it, mm -hmm. he has Simpa in it, and much more. Right. You see? So we need to be able to build that dark. Right now, Afrobeat is not our DNA. People would come out and say, oh, but it's from High Life and blah, blah. But and, some and people picked it there. up, yes? And then they rebranded it, did whatever they wanted with it, and it has become this. Okay. There's nothing you will do. It's going to remain this. It's going to be with them. You can't take that away from them. Okay, so this is pinpointing what the problem is. Right. What will be your solution to bringing back Ghana's music DNA? Beautiful. We have to go back into it and encourage it. Okay. We have to be able to consciously say that, okay, this is what we want to do with our music. Mm -hmm. Azonto came, that was high life. We threw it away. We said we were tired of it. Nigerians picked it up, put in a few flavors in there, and mm -hmm. boom. They have Afrobeat, yeah. and we are running after them again, begging for the crumbs from off the table. So we need to bring back the high life. We need to be able to encourage people and diffuse that bad mindset of, oh, high life is for old people. Right. Let's have young, sexy girls like you hey. have high life written on their shirts. <laughs> Let them post on TikTok with a high life something in the background. It's right. like farming, agriculture. Mm -hmm. When you have young, beautiful ladies holding the whole, sitting in the tractors, mm -hmm. combined harvesters and all that. It becomes more attractive. You right. are making agriculture sexy. Make high life sexy. Sex sells. But Hashtag. Hashtag yeah. make high life sexy. sexy. Exactly. And those are Black Rasta's words. Black Rasta, thank you so much. Bless it. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Thanks for having I've me. I've enjoyed it. And so, yeah, I appreciate it. And all the best in the release of um, Salaga Soja. Hopefully it gets to it gets onto the pedestal that you envision it to get on. For right. Real. And so when it drops, definitely I'll be I'll be listening to it. For so real. yeah. <laughs>